Journal Entry 61 Well, Jason came back from the guild with a job offer. We can make nearly twice the money we need with a single job. That job, of course, is to assassinate the king. He's not a popular man around here. Of course, we're not exactly assassins. The fact I'm seriously considering this job shows just how far I've slipped. I've talked with the others, and they're all for it. Marcus explained it best with Spock logic. The needs of the many, us and our need of money, outweigh the needs of the few, the king and his need to live. It's fucked up logic, but on the good side. Maybe this replacement will do something about the fucking barbarians. We decided to take the job. Jason picked up a map from his guild and we're going to do some planning later tonight. In the meantime, we're attending Amanda's burial. Partially to make sure they don't fuck it up. She's been through enough. Journal Entry 62 So the castle has 124 rooms spread across four floors. The king's chambers on the fourth floor with a single entrance and access from a forward and rear balcony. We figure the interior is loaded with royal guards. Going to the front door is obviously out. Using a balcony entrance is dangerous. We poked around the market to see what resources we can get our hands on. No magic flight rods or anything like that, unfortunately. The best we can get out of the Thieves Guild is some rope, but it's quite a distance to climb. We could use it for a quick escape, though. Too bad we don't have a sniper rifle. His throne room is nearly level with the end roof half a mile away and has a clear window. How to get inside a heavily guarded castle? Can't imitate the guards. They don't use face masks and probably know each other well. There are no silly royal parties scheduled either. The king's schedule is pretty simple. He wakes up, eats, sits in the throne room and listens to the local woes. Around lunch, he quits and putters around with his mistress and then official kingdom business until dinner. Then sleeps, then repeat. The afternoon court is apparently an open affair. I'll see about doing some recon tomorrow. Journal Entry 63 Okay, the castle isn't as bustling as I thought it would be. Went in with Marcus and observed court, which was a few hours of peasant complaints, hilariously one-sided criminal trials, and a local gossip hour. Apparently, this kind of thing is not common with the other kingdoms. It's just that there are no nobles in town, so the king has an open court so he can pretend it's important. He's not even married, and his mistress is an ugly half-orc. Well, ugly face, but she's got some hot curves. I bet he uses a cloth sack. Anyways, I think our best opportunity would be to go in during court, slip away at the inn and hang out in one of the unused castle rooms until night, and then do the deed. Marcus wanted to help, but he's our public face and he shouldn't get involved. Mike will be waiting near the castle in case we need assistance in escaping the grounds. Just me and Jason. Court starts in a few hours, so we'll begin Project Kingslayer then. Journal Entry 64 Well, it didn't go as planned, but it didn't go entirely bad either. We slipped off on our way out of court and occupied a dusty room in the east wing. Poked around for a bit, found a few silver coins laying around. A few hours after nightfall, we moved out. Made it to the fourth floor of this wing, which is mostly unused. Only had to slip past a couple of off-duty staff. We had to put down one nosy cleaning lady. She's still alive. I tried a new trick on her, a kind of memory loop. Not sure if it worked, but she casually walked out of the room and into a wall. Knocked herself out. Good enough, I guess. She didn't get a good look at us, at least. Did some climbing around outside to get to the balcony, and we were in the king's chamber. Just like that. Then we sat there for half an hour, staring. I couldn't do it. Jason finally manned up and put a pillow over the king's face, and slit his throat out before he could be in the struggle. Got kind of an adrenaline high after that. Grabbed some things from the room, some coinage, some magic looking baubles, and repelled off the balcony using rope. Then we got caught. Plowed right into a guard and one of the gardeners, uh, making out. I put the guard down before he could fumble his pants back on and get his sword, and Jason took out the gardener. I don't feel good about this job at all. Journal Entry 65 We got paid and set up with a caravan heading out to Brightly tomorrow. I feel like shit. We officially crossed a line and are now murderers. Everything in town is in chaos. Guards are raiding all the shady hideouts and arresting anyone they think is shady looking. We were hanging out in one of the more popular inns to try and blend in with the crowd. We don't blend well. Anyways, there's no royal heir to assume the throne, so the advisors are working out what to do. Maybe they'll invent democracy. 
Ah, who am I kidding? It'll be a military dictatorship until whoever names themselves emperor. In other news, I've gotten good enough at reading to kind of read a book. It wasn't very interesting, or very long. It's about some historical battles centuries ago in the area. Turns out the barbarian tribe is remains of a rival kingdom that was wiped out. Fucking barbarians. Anyways, time to resupply for the trip. I could use some new clothes. At least a new shirt. My jeans are holding up okay. My shirt has changed colors several times now. From blue to brown to red and now it's gray and covered in sloppily repaired rips and tears. Journal Entry 66 so we're passengers in a caravan heading to Brightly. It's supposedly a safe route. I've heard that before. Figured out what the magic things we stole from the king's chamber do. We got a poison immunity necklace and what appears to be an immovable ring. Like an immovable rod, but as a ring. It's plain gold and luckily bound to this gravity sphere. Otherwise, who knows where it would zoom off to. Why would anyone make this is beyond me? Maybe it was an accident. Anyways, the caravan is made up of about 15 carts. It was hastily put together once the local trade guild found out about the airship issues. We have a crew of 40 or so people. Hired guards, horse and ox drivers, merchants, their support staff, and passengers. The caravan leader is a civilized orc woman. She's gotta be at least 6 foot 5. Now, I have never been into muscle girls, or green skin for that matter. But damn. She's apparently made her name for herself the locals and well trusted as some kind of trailblazer. Journal Entry 67 It's been raining for the last few days. It slowed us down considerably with muddy roads, carts getting stuck, and fallen trees. Why don't they pave anything? The Romans did it. Spirits would be lower if not for Marcus's music. Did some chatting with the merchants. Seems Winterfield has no real exports. They just import everything they need. Which is most things because of their barbarian problem. How do they afford it? Exporting their leftovers to Brightly for an even higher price. Brightly is apparently even more isolated. It's a lumber community, harvesting trees, producing wood products, but lacking large farm space and anyone else to trade with. So everything they make comes and goes through Winterfield. With the airship down and the barbarian problem, the entire arm of the trade network is cut off. Too bad they don't have trains. I'm not even sure how to make a steam engine. I know the science behind it, of course. If we ever get back to Wild Lake, I'll have to hit up the artificer. Or maybe find another one out here. Invent a magical monorail. Wouldn't that be funny? Ah, great. Marcus was reading over my shoulder and now playing the monorail song. Journal Entry 68. Well, the rain stopped just long enough for a kobold raid. A whole shitload of little fuckers. Three of the caravan guard are dead. Many injuries. Twice as many kobolds were brought down and the rest scattered. They got away with several bags of clothing from one of the carts. From their mental state, they were kind of desperate for anything to help with the coming winter in a few months. I used to wonder what would drive someone to do something like that, and, well, now I know. I've been put in that situation, but with even less important reasons. No point on dwelling on it, though. So we should reach Brightly either tomorrow or the day after, depending on the rain. Luckily, I've been managing to keep my notepad dry the whole time. Caught one of the merchants trying to read it last night when I set it aside to eat. Yeah, he couldn't read it. That's one thing we got. A language the locals can't read. Speaking of the locals, I'm pretty sure Marcus did the bard thing and got lucky with one of the caravan girls. Not sure which. Maybe it was more than one. I hope the anti-poison ring also does diseases. Journal Entry 69. Nice. We made it to Brightly a few hours after nightfall. The city gates are closed, so we camped just outside, partying like gypsies on making it with minimal losses. There is a massive forest around this place, and from what I gather, they're clear cutting the forest non-stop and processing the wood, but it's growing as fast as they can cut it. Magical woods of the unhaunted variety from what they say. Rumor has it that there are a bunch of dryads inside that that are churning out trees to keep the people from cutting deeper into the woods where their special trees are. Just rumor though. I'm willing to bet there's some horrible evil locked away out there. That's how it usually is. Or maybe the horrible evil and the dryads are working together to get rich off the lumber industry. Who knows? Journal Entry 70 I must have drank more than I thought last night. Woke up with a fresh tattoo on my arm from one of the merchant girls. She says it's a magical symbol for courage. Yeah, bullshit. We have that joke on my world too. 
is not uncommon and just looks like a fancy shape and not bad looking, I guess. Whatever. So, Brightly isn't what I was expecting. It's not a human town. Reptile people. Dragonborn, maybe? Not the shouting kind, though they are loud, boisterous. At least they're friendly. The trade caravan is doing their business and heading out tomorrow. Us Terrans, in the meantime, need to plan the next leg of our amazing odyssey. This university is part of a city named Elian and is to the east, almost dead east. There is no trade route there. They are self-sufficient and considered one of the larger kingdoms, and prefer not to deal with the other kingdoms if they don't have to. Isolationists. I hope they like off-worlders, at least. Journal Entry 71 Well, the caravan is gone. We're currently the only humans in this city, which means we can't pull off anything shady. We're also getting the special treatment, lots of attention, sometimes not always the good kind. So we're planning over a map, working out our next expedition. Aelin is a week or more away on foot, we'll have to cut over the edge of a small mountain on the way if we take the most direct route. The locals helped fill in some of the more blank spots on the map for this area, but there are still a lot of unknowns. The cold weather is coming in in a few months, so we can't dally around. Since we'll be passing through the middle of nowhere, we probably won't have any trouble with some of the bandit races like goblins or kobolds, and the terrain isn't suited to roving barbarian tribes. My best bet, if there is anything out there, wild elves are a crazy loner wizard. Otherwise, probably be dealing with large and possibly magic animals. Money isn't a problem yet. We still have quite a bit from the king job, and we made more selling that weird ring. Suggested to the locals how they can use it in their lumber business as floating O-rings or a platform base of some kind. We're gonna wait a day and then head out. Too many non-humans are starting to creep me out. Journal Entry 72 Well, we're on the road again. Not really a road though, more like a small, infrequently used path used by crazy adventurers that could easily be confused with a goat path. What I wouldn't give for an ATV. Camped out in a clearing for the night. Dinner consisted of dried meat and dried fruit. It wasn't bad, just needs salt. Something that's pretty rare here. How do you take such things for common back home? Seasoning is something that only the rich have here. Sugar is another thing. I haven't had any sweets in god knows how long. Chocolate. Do they even have chocolate here? Mint is another thing. If I ever get home, I'll have to remember to bring some candy next time a portal opens to my living room. Candy and a shotgun. And bags of ammo. And a fucking ATV. Journal Entry 73 Well, we've been captured by kobolds. The same ones from the caravan raid. They aren't entirely hostile this time, and I don't think they recognize us. Just more humans to them. I can tell it's them from the free-floating memories. Kobolds are very... It's hard to explain in words, but they kind of project their minds everywhere in a non-telepathic way. It makes reading them as easy as staring at a painting. Some of them speak common. They couldn't decide if they should ditch us and continue on their way, rob us and leave us dead, or take us with them as hostages. They are kind of wandering aimlessly. They left their previous village, tribe, to expand. They got lost, and don't really know how to survive on their own without banditry. We are trying to make a deal with them. They let us go, and we teach them the basics of construction, engineering, and farming. They can create their own village, and not have to worry about getting stabbed in the face just to eat. Journal Entry 74 Well, the Kobold High Command has taken to our offer, and is now escorting us some of the way to Alien. We've begun telling them about farming and construction basics. Simple stuff that they've apparently never had to think about living in a cave. They are catching on pretty fast though, I'll give them that. You just have to find the right way to explain it to them, and in terms they understand. Their first few attempts are probably going to be a catastrophe, but they apparently don't give up easy when they get an idea in their head. Any information we tell them spreads throughout them at a pretty fast rate. I guess like gossip but man, they smell terrible. Journal Entry 75 We're crossing the edge of the mountains now. It's so cold up here. We're probably a good mile off sea level. The kobolds are all wrapped up in their stolen clothes, and some are carrying around burning homemade torches for warmth when they're on the move. I'm wearing everything I own. Assuming we don't run into any trouble, we should be back down by tomorrow. Mountain climbing is a whole new experience for me. 
My hands are probably going to be covered in blisters tomorrow. If not from pulling myself up the rocks, then helping the damn kobolds. Since they've gotten to know us, they've gone from menacing bandits to friendly puppies in disposition. Things would probably be worse off if Marcus wasn't strumming along most of the time, keeping our spirits up. Mike's been pretty quiet, still won't talk about who or what he made his warlock pact with, or the terms of the deal. The emotions coming off of him are troubling though. Depression. I've been giving him some mental nudges to try and snap him out of it, but all I'm doing is keeping him from sliding further down. Journal Entry 76 Still in the mountains, no big issues. It just got darker out faster than usual due to cloud cover. We are held up in the remains of a crashed ship. A crashed ship in the mountains. It's been here a while and doesn't have the extras that the other airship had. So how did it get here? Magic, probably. Magic is always the answer. It's a slave ship. The busted remains of the hole is still full of chained up, frost covered skeletons. We made damn sure they weren't magic skeletons at first. Just a regular kind. There's no loot here. Whoever survived took everything worth taking with them, or was stripped by passing adventurers. It's warmer inside, so we're staying the night and should be on our way come morning. Tried my hand at writing and put a message on the wall in common stating our names, party size, date, and where we're going. A note of our passing. It occurred to me afterwards that I used an earthly year, not the local year. How long have we been here again? Journal Entry 77 We've made it out of the mountains. We're camped at a small river, only four foot deep at crossing. We had to help the kobolds cross though, so we're all pretty wet. None of our gear got soaked through though, luckily. They like the area, it's a pretty good place for them to set up their Koboldville experiment. Big open area, some woods not far away, a freshwater river and the lake less than a mile away. They weren't sure what to call it, so I suggested Chicago, because it's funny. We're splitting off from them come morning and heading on our own. According to the map, we have a few more days travel through some woods and then aliens should be in sight. This fucking trip better have been worth it. We've lost so much and gained so little for it so far. Anyways, we're spending the night dumping as much info as we can on the kobolds and hopefully it works out for them. Sure, they're creepy little lizard slash dragon people, but they're nice once they ditch their distrust. Not that I want one living near me. They still smell, even after they bathe. Journal Entry 78 So we've been tromping through the woods for the last few days and suddenly breach the forest edge and plow right into another group of adventurers. They briefly mistook us for bandits, but luckily no one was hurt. They were heading away from Alien and on the way to some burial tomb slash doom maze for loot. We updated our map. Ours had Alien in the wrong place. It's further north. Apparently the city has hundreds of farms stretching for miles to the south. And there's a mine slash quarry on the north end. We're in farm country. I'm not expecting any problems. We have a well-traveled and patrolled road to follow with several taverns along the way for the farmers. It'll be nice to have some cooked food for a change. And some booze. Journal Entry 79 We're in our first tavern for the night about half a day from the city. It's got a few rooms we can use. Beds. Yes. Picked up some local history. Ayen used to be an isolated elf city way back when, many centuries ago. Used to have a bit of an Aztec flavor to it from hearing the description. Then the place gets flooded with refugees from some war. All manner of races moving in but mostly humans, and the elves, in their short-sighted compassion, granted sanctuary. Well, they got mostly outbred almost immediately, and now it's a mostly human slash half-elf city with spatterings of other races. The only traces of the old culture are some of the more ancient buildings in town. The old forests were cleared away for some construction, and then farming. Sure enough, it has that university we've been looking for in the middle of it. My expectations have lowered since hearing about it though. Everyone has such great things to say about it, but they themselves have never been there, and they're always saying the same things. Propaganda. The good news is, is that there are airships there. So if we need to leave, it should be a much easier trip, if not more expensive. Well, either way, we are going to rampage the shit out of that university library if we have to. Journal Entry 80 Welcome to Wonderland that is Aegon. Well, we're in the city. Probably a quarter of the population are magic users of some sort, mostly low talent. We're staying in one of the larger rims. Marcus is staying free as long as he's working as the inn's nightly entertainment. The city is larger than I expected. There must be hundreds of thousands of people here. 
Whole districts stretch on for miles. It's far larger than any city we've seen so far. There are about 12 districts. We're in the old city, which is the central district. It makes accessing the other districts easier as it's set up as a giant wheel and we're in the hub. Government buildings are scattered all over, non-centralized. There's a king, it is a kingdom, but no castle or court. He leaves the running of the city to his advisors and only steps in when he wants something specific to happen. There is almost a public education system, only available to merchant class and up, a local postal service, semi-proper sewage and garbage disposal. They still dump it in the river, just not inside the town and downstream, and church-sponsored health care. Several churches are sponsored here and stay competitive. They've lowered their healing rates to free for citizens. At least that's my guess. So we can see the university from here. It's off in the 2 o'clock district. Pretty big and lit up with magic glows. We're heading there tomorrow. Today, we're resting and getting situated. My only complaint about this place is that everything is gray. The roads, the walls, the buildings. Everything is gray stone from the quarry. Granite. That means the city is one giant radiation sink. Wonderful. Journal Entry 81. So we're in the university. Getting in was easy. We just had to register with the administration. They wanted race, name, and where we started from. Rosenbridge, I guess. We got a long speech about the rules. No taking anything off campus and no wrecking stuff, basically. They were expecting us to be students, but all that changed once it slipped that we were off-worlders. Suddenly, we're subjects. So we have an agreement. They help us dig up any information that we can find in their library system, and in exchange, they'll study us in non-harmful ways. So, that's what we did today. We got separated, poked, prodded, and aura sampled. I spent more time with my clothes off, standing in front of weird magical devices, and having strange diagnostic spells being thrown at me than anything else. I did find out what the tattoo on my arm says. It's in some draconic script. It means... the. It could be worse, I suppose. Currently, we're in the library. While we did manage to learn to read, we're still having trouble with the more complex books. We have requisitioned an apprentice wizard to help. Nice girl in her early 20s. Wit as sharp as a knife, though. So we are researching planeswalkers, traveling, off-planes visitors, and mysterious talking portals. A written language expert did show up to see our written language, but it's new to him. I wrote up a sample for him. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog for him to look into. We keep getting random people visiting. Apparently our rival has created a stir. Not every day they get lost off-worlders, I guess. Journal Entry 82 so there have been many off-world visitors recorded across the centuries. Some came as tourists, some came to conquer, but they all came and left under their own power. No tales of anyone being enticed through a portal from any world remotely like Earth. No talking portals either. Why the hell are we here? There's still a shitload of stuff to go through, so maybe we'll come up with an answer eventually. Anyways, had a talk with our assistant about what happened to Alex back in Rosenbridge. Apparently, strokes are one of the many things that can happen when a spell is cast wrong. It could have been worse, I guess. We could have really used Alex and Avery on a stupid adventure. Or Dand. Or the ones imprisoned. We should do something about that. We'll go back to Rosenbridge one day, and we won't be scared, lost, and helpless this time. Then we'll deal with those fucking Winterfield barbarians. So, speaking of that, we are invited to attend some of their courses. They have something for nearly everyone. Kind of. They actually have some scions around, and some courses for the more magical aspects of barding, and Mike really wants to dig into that warlock course. Find out exactly what he's in for. Not sure what Jason's going to learn, though. I don't think they teach Grand Theft here. Maybe he can resume his apprenticeship at the local Thieves Guild. He's already checked in with them. Journal Entry 83. That was incredibly tiresome. Scion class involves sitting in a circle and just mind-fucking the shit out of each other while the professor or master or whatever he wants to call himself observes and keeps things from getting out of hand and repairing any damage. It's to build strength, learn to adapt defenses, and so on. Got tested for telekinetics, but got nothing. Might not be ready for that, or maybe I can't do it. Marcus apparently taught the master bard some earth music. Not sure what Mike was up to, but he was white as a sheet when we met back up. He won't talk about it, but his mind was screaming demon summoning at me. Fantastic. Spent some more time digging through the books. 
There was a talking portal in some dungeon, but it spoke riddles and it wasn't transdimensional. In other news, the Master Officer showed up and took a good look at our gear. I gave him a bicycle sketch and hinted at so much more in exchange for figuring out how to keep our electronics charged. Whispers of steam engines touching his mind ever so slightly. Mental glimpses of aircraft and cars appearing and fading like a dream. I'm getting better at this shit. Journal Entry 84 So much philosophical bullshit evolved in this class. At least there's no homework. It would be amusing if there was. Go home and mind rape someone. Exam tomorrow. Marcus is having the time of his life, and even Mike is starting to relax. Jason's been away quite a bit, says he's learning the craft. So we finished tearing through the archives. Nothing we can use. Even the big directory of planes had nothing. Our assistant got some approval and, with some help, tried summoning a fucking devil to get some answers. But it snapped up tight at the sight of us and wouldn't give up anything. It didn't even want to deal. What the fuck? What does that even mean? I'd be in a worse mood, except the Artificer Master reworked our little static stone a bit. We can use it to charge things. We watched Strange Days again and listened to music. Got Amanda's iPad charged up and took a look through it. She had brought a shitload of farming information with her and never said a thing about it. I wonder how useful this information would be. Journal Entry 85 Since we're kind of students, we were invited to stay in the university housing. We took it up because it's saving us money and meals are included. It's a huge underground apartment complex with enough rooms for all the professors, students, and staff. Around 400 rooms of varying size. We're put with the students, of course. Back in college again. We have such things to teach them. Beer pong, for instance. At least that was what came to mind, but no, the place is dead quiet. No fun allowed. More class. Wandered town for a while and saw some of the sights, and then hung around the market. I think this is the first time in a while that we didn't have some immediate goal to shoot for. This is it. We made it here. Now what? If we can't find a way home, if there is no way home, we'll have to settle somewhere and live out our lives. Radiation aside, this is the nicest place we've been in. What do I want to do with my life? I've certainly gained new skills. I'm sure I could make an excellent dungeon interrogator or mind thief. Blackmail artist, maybe. Always with the evil. Maybe because it's all there is beside from peasantry. I'm not a fucking peasant, and my skills certainly make lying, cheating, and stealing easy. What the fuck? Journal Entry 86 We gathered up and talked. I brought up our future and we made a plan. We're going to head back to Rosenbridge after we're done here. Did some checking around, the best way back is to circle around the other way. Take an airship to Ashvale and from there, hop a ship to Kynil Beach and if we're lucky, take another airship to Rosenbridge. If not, right up from Wolf Lake. From there, we should be able to hop on the trade network to Rosenbridge from there. About a month's journey. Not exactly fast, but it looks to be safer than the way we came according to some people we asked. My only concern is that some of the area on my map says beware orcs. I was told that's been taken care of, that they've been pacified in a war. Always using that word, pacified. I don't like the way that sounds. Some kind of war happened out there that no one is really clear on. Anyways, our classes should last a few more weeks, then we head out. We are already starting to save up some monies for Marcus's tavern playing. Jason is sneaky sneaky, and I have found an interesting new business. Five coppers, and they get to look at my porn collection on the Kindle. It's been hugely popular in the dorms. Did I just accidentally invent pornography? Journal Entry 87 This last week's been rough. Doing a full on mind attack in the middle of a fight without having to stop. I think I got it down, but goddamn, how to put it? Having to split your full attention at two things at once. Hardcore multitasking. Had to visit the healer a few times early on when I fucked up. Speaking of the healer, poked around to see if they knew about the radiation issue. They do know that people occasionally get cancer for no reason, and they can heal it. They believe it's either from the university's dark magics or a sinful lifestyle. When I told them it was all the granite, they thought I was crazy. I learned something else, something very important. It's possible to raise the dead. Resurrection. It's very expensive and doesn't always turn out right though. Should we? I don't know we should bother bringing them back to this hellhole. They may be the lucky ones, sitting back and watching us from that elsewhere. The world does have a definitive afterlife. Possibly several, it's not clear. And 
I don't know how to feel about this. Journal Entry 88. Well, there was a festival going on today. A big one. The Central District was all done up, song, dance, and specialized merchant goods. They're celebrating the season change. They apparently do this every season. A last hurrah for the last one. Kind of a weird day to go about it, but a party is a party. So let's see. Where to begin? Well, that many people having a blast is overwhelming, and I nearly succumbed to it and found myself to be bored. So, I let myself succumb to it and had the best time of my life. Most of it is a blur, and I blacked out at some point. Let's see, I, uh, I danced, and I got drunk, then I think I got lucky with a smoking hot tiefling chick. At least, I think she was hot. I was blitzed at the time. After that, it's just broken flashes. I think I challenged a dwarf to a drinking contest at some point. What the fuck was I thinking at the time? I don't know. Something happened during nightfall. I think I was leading some locals on a quest to find a goblin townie to see how many beers it took to get him drunk. For science, I guess. I woke up this morning in a detox room at one of the temples with most of my clothes missing. Luckily, I left all my stuff back at the dorm. Got cleaned up, gave my hangover migraine to someone else, and here I am. I have to find that damn magic necklace. I bet I got lead or mercury poisoning. I haven't put it on in a while. Journal Entry 89 So, the Master Officer shows up today on a bicycle. Had the pedals on the front wheels like a penny farthing, but the wheels were even sized and leather padded. No traction at all, and braking involved using your legs. Simple, but it is a prototype. He was completely taken by the thing though. Took him a few days to figure out how to ride it, but he spent a good portion of today pedaling around town and only crashed three times. Being the nice guy he was, and wanting more business, he decided to give me a bonus of a magic purse that duplicates any one, and only one, item put into it, usable once per day. And the item must be small. He did warn me of some rules. No money duplicating. Apparently it's legal and they can find out somehow. And no duplicating magic items. It works on bullets. I tried it. It's a slow method of restocking, but it does give me some peace of mind. I still have to be careful. So he's having his apprentices or students refine the bike. He's ready for something new. So I got together with Jason and we drew out some plans and introduced him to the Bessemer Converter. Neither of us knew the right chemical formula other than carbon was involved. I'm sure the master artificer can figure it out. They do make steel here. It's just a slow, tedious process. If he can get it to work, he seems to think we're all going to make a fortune. Journal Entry 90 Spent some time in the archives doing research today. Had a few ideas of some of the new topics to look up that may have leads. Nothing. It got me thinking though. Were we the only ones from Earth that ended up here? Just the ones that showed up in Rosenbridge? Why here? Why there? Why us? If we were summoned here, what the hell are we supposed to do? What did that fucking voice want us here for? To kill some king in Winterfield? To run rampant across the countryside? To die one by one? What? Anyways, we have another week before we're done here and move on. We have enough money saved up. Now I just need my psychic diploma and do the hat toss and I'm good. Been taking some frustration out by practicing sword fighting with Mike or Jason. Jason's slippery as fuck in mock combat. What the hell are they teaching him? Well, uh, sorry for the wait guys. Uh, I'm sure y'all know by now I was a sick motherfucker, but I finally got my uh, my voice back somewhat. So I did a nice long video for you, and I hope you enjoy the video in this nice longer format. Also, if you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe to Neckbeardia, as well as click the bell icon so you know when the videos are released through the week. Additionally, old, uh, old Necky's got a few surprises coming up for you guys. I I think y'all gonna enjoy it. Some nice original content y'all can sink your teeth into. But this has been Guard Bro, and I will see you next time. Oh.